Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator here in Boulder Canyon. I pressed X. Okay, maybe I didn't press X. Uh, we are going to finish up our baling today, then we're going to gather up the bales, and we're going to bring them all back down here, and I'm going to just unfold and do that little bit right there, because otherwise it's not going to be done. And... Then we're going to most likely need to go until tomorrow sometime so that we can sell everything, right? We've got a load of stuff here and, well, not necessarily everything. At the moment, the thing we're watching, that's way too low. There's no way we're selling there. I do believe that that will go above 600. I'm sort of thinking above 600 would be right. Um, wool is still going down, so there's no way we're selling wool today. But that at 297, I don't really know. If it starts to drop, then I think we will do an, we will sell immediately. Because I've always said if it's above 250, I'm happy to sell it. Because we've seen it go right down to 180. I have sold above 300, but I mean, we're pretty close. So if it starts to drop, I will sell. With like 296, 295 will sell. Um, that needs to go up. That'll double in price from what it is at the moment. But that right there, yeah. If it goes up, excellent. That would be fantastic. We get even more money for it. But if it does start to drop, then we will sell quickly and we will get the money sooner rather than later. I think that would be a better option because that way we're going to be just that little much closer, the little bit closer to actually getting our, let me go over to this one, getting our sheep pen and it's the sheep pen that we're after that's what we're waiting for that's what we want to get Let's bring that one on round there once we've got the sheep pen then next thing i'm thinking of getting is a chicken pen i'm thinking sheep and then chickens both one after the other we're going to need to clear some more trees from over there in order to be able to fit it all in uh but that's what i'm thinking one after the other sheep and chickens and We'll get a load more pallets over here so that we can be using the pallets to get the wool and everything. And uh, the wool and the eggs. I think it's going to be a good move. I think it's going to end up being profitable for us. I really do. And one thing I haven't looked at is what is the price of eggs? We haven't. I haven't been following the price of eggs. I haven't been keeping an eye on them. So 2,700 and they're dropping at the moment. That's now reached its bottom right there at 747. So it's going to come back up after a while. Not yet though. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen there. It could be interesting. So, eggs. We know that eggs do make a bit of money. And then the other thing that I was talking about in yesterday's episode that I will mention again today is how are we going to sell our crop. Now, there's two schools of thought on this. What I've established. Uh, first up, the quantity that I want to sell in will involve me having to buy another trailer. So the trailer that we've got at the moment is this one and it has 8,000 litre capacity. So we could just do it in lumps of 8,000 but I didn't want to do that, it's just going to take too long. Uh, so what I thought ultimately the best trailer that we've got here would be this one right here. It's $35,000, 45,000 litres and I thought 45,000 litres was a reasonable amount of material to be carrying at any one time. Now, this one doesn't actually have a rear hitch on it, but a trailer like that, it wouldn't be unusual to see one with a rear hitch on it. And I know, I don't know about the US, I don't know if that's even legal, but I know in some countries it is legal to have the hitch on the back and have three, maybe even four of these trailers all strung out together on um, more, remote lo r more remote roads. So it's 45,000 litres that that one takes. And what I'm thinking is... A merchant is coming up from the lowlands. Now, I'm assuming that we're up in the highlands, we're, we're up in the mountains somewhere, and we, we don't have any merchants up here. So anybody that's buying produce from us has got to travel something in the region of 150 miles to be able to get to us, which means that they're not going to be coming after us with just one tiny little bit, which is why we sell wool pallets, a full 10,000 litre pallet in one go. We don't sell part pallets. Um... It's not worth them coming up here. It's not worth them taking up space on their load with half a pallet when they're going off to go and get stuff from elsewhere. So what I was thinking was, well, what are we going to do with um, crops? What are we going to do with grain? 
because there's two ways we could look at this. One, he's coming up with three 45,000 litre trailers or four 45,000 litre trailers, whatever he, he's going to travel with. So if we sell him one load at 45,000 litres and then we've got another 10,000 litres we sell him as well, there's 10,000 litres going into another trailer. That's taking up that trailer. So if he goes off to another farmer, he's either got to make sure that they've got the same crop to sell or he's not going to be able to fill that trailer up. And even then, because it's coming from two separate farmers, it's very likely that he's not going to want to mix that stuff because it's going to, um, when the crop gets to its destination, it's going to be tested and checked over for a number of different um, conditions and things. And so if you're mixing it from two different suppliers, that's not good. That, that, that's, uh, certainly here in Europe, they don't like you mixing from suppliers too much, or certainly not to start with because it makes traceability incredibly difficult, right? Traceability then takes a massive plunge and it becomes a, a bit more of a nightmare. Um, so we, we've got to take that into account as well, is the whole traceability thing. So I'm thinking that yes, possibly, you could argue that the, um, the produce that you're selling is going to take a half a load from us, he's going to go over to the next farmer, he's going to take another half a load from them. But... I counter that with my own argument that I don't think that would be the case. I think that they would want to keep it separate. So he's only going to want a full 45,000 litre load. He's not going to want to be taking 10,000 litres from us and then topping up from someone else. If we've got 45,000 litres, ideal, we sell him 45,000 litres. If we've got 90,000 litres, then ideal, we sell him two loads. If we've got 80,000 litres, we can sell one load the remaining 35,000 litres that we got left, that's just going to have to stay in storage until we've got more that we've produced on our farm here. Um, that's what I'm thinking would and should be happening. Um, I know it could be argued that maybe, yeah, there would, there would be mixture or, you know, they put petitions in, um, the, into the trailers, whatever it might be. But... The reason that I'm also leaning heavily towards wanting to do this is because I think it creates a bit more of a challenge for us. Because I know that I do cut quite a few corners on this series, and I did talk about this yesterday as well, so I'll only cover it briefly. Um, I cut corners on this series in order to keep it, uh, you know, try and keep it entertaining for people to watch. I'm using auto loaders and stuff like that, and that's not realistic. And I'm doing it in order to make sure that the videos remain entertaining for people to watch. Because I don't think that anybody's going to want to watch me stacking up hundreds of bales by hand and keeping those bales at uh, eight, at, at 4,000 litres, which is why I was also asking yesterday, do you want me to start increasing the um, quantity of the bale to twelve or even 16,000 litres? Um, so comment on that by all means, but this it, it's the trailer thing that I want you to mostly talk about today. That's, that's the one that I'm most keen to hear about. So get into the comment section, tell me what you think about the trailers. Do you think we should be keeping the trailers as, um, so long as it's more than 45,000 litres? I will go and buy that trailer, the 45,000 litre one. That is one that I'm going to buy. Um, and But the question is, do you think that we can sell everything if we got 45,000 litres minimum? Or do you think we should stick to only quantities of the 45,000 litres? If, if I can do a full trailer, we can sell it. If it doesn't make the full trailer, regardless of how many full trailers we may have sold already, we cannot sell it. It's, it's not an option. We can't do it. Um, what are your thoughts and views and opinions on that one? Please get into the comment section down below and let me know, and then we will act accordingly. Right, we've done all the bailing. Everything is done and dusted down there. I've got a line of machinery here waiting to be cleaned up and, and so on and so forth. So we'll start doing that in a minute. We do have bales that we want to go and collect. Silage hasn't changed yet. Straw hasn't changed yet. Um, wheat is going up and it's on 520 at the moment. So I think that hoping for 600 on barley is not out of the question. I think that's actually going to be all right. Okay, we'll hose this bad boy down and we will get this one put away. And I'm going to do that now. And although maybe we ought to get a trailer 
go off and do that so that we can clear it. Then we can get a fertilizer spreader going in the field and then we can worry about cleaning up machinery and putting it away. I should be doing things that way around. I'm thinking maybe I should. Right. Let's stop with that. You can stay right there. Oops. No. Um, you can stay right there. That's what I want to do. I want to drop that one off there a minute. Then we're going to go over this way. And the bales, they're all going to be dropped in the yard temporarily. So I'm going to hook you on. And I'm going to start loading those bales. And we will go and get the rest of this load. We will make 24 of them. And we're loading bales now, which means that we do need to be going at 30 times speed as we are loading. And we're not doing anything else either. So we now actually start using the 30 times speed rule that is supposed to be used all the time, but rarely is because of reasons. Um, there we go. We'll bring that round. See, this is like this right here, running around doing the auto loading so that I can get the job done quickly, efficiently, get it out of the way. I'm speeding up time to, you know, simulate the passage of time during this job, but I'm not actually making you sit there and watch me load up um, bale after bale after bale by hand, because we all know that, that would take an inordinately long time. It, it would take a ridiculous amount of time to go and do all of that. So. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to sit and I'm not going to make you sit and watch all of that because, quite frankly, I think it's going to get insanely dull. Um, I don't really want to do it either, to be honest. Uh, there's only so many bales that I can load up, and I do enough of that in the time lapse series. So I don't really want to do any more. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the bales in the yard. I am loading them up with straps like that. So then I'll take the straps off. I do that, and then uh, yeah, we'll dump them this side. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. There, do that. Right, there's the first load unloaded. Now we will go and get the... Uh, I'll get the rest of the straw a minute first. I was wondering about getting the silage, but no, I will run through very quickly and we will get the rest of the straw. So get that one, get three of them right there. And I do need to put the time... I, I put the time back to five times while I was taking it back to the yard. It's now on 30. I'm, I'm doing quite well, actually. I've actually remembered to put it on 30. I, I feel that that's a huge step in the right direction. Although, I do need to keep a closer eye on what the silage is doing. Still 297. Because we're ticking along at 30 times speed, that silage is likely to start changing with relatively short notice. Well, with no notice whatsoever. I'm going to go up there and get that one bale of straw up there. I'm not going to pick up the silage bales on this load. I'm going to keep the silage and the straw separate so that if the prices um, peak at different times, we're not going to have them all mixed up. I'd rather avoid that if we can. So run up and grab this one. And then once we've taken this load of straw back, then we can come back through and we can grab the um, silage bales. So take that one up there, and then whiz back down here. Is that it? Is that all we got left? Another four bales? It does indeed look like we've only got four bales left. So that's going to be 12 on this load. So it's one and a half trailer loads. Now, you've got to remember that our bales are 8,000 litres and not 4,000 litres, which does mean that we've actually, with exactly one and a half trailer loads, what we actually ended up with was three trailer loads of standard size bales. So I do that, I do that, and I do that. Not that. Um, so three trailer loads right there, standard size bales. And that's not a bad that's not a bad lot off of the field, I don't think. I think that's pretty good actually. Also, another thing that I want to do is build a track all the way along the edge of the field there. We've got a bit of the field that we want to level out down there. And I want to do something here at this end so that we stop driving down over the bank part of this one. So there's a couple of little bit, little changes and things that we want to make here. And I'm going to bring that there and then bring these bales up close to it. Like that. Okay. They were a little bit closer than I thought they'd be, but that's fine. They can stay there. 
We'll run off and we'll get these other bail. Let's just check. Okay, silage is still holding. That's holding. Eggs are still dropping. Straw is holding. And barley is holding. Okay. I know that it's not been very much time has gone past, but time does tick and it does make a difference. So let's go and get some silage loaded up. And this is going to answer our question as to how, well, as they answer our question, we're going to find out how many bales we're going to get. Also, if we've got these bales loaded up and the price does start to change, we may be able to make good use of this. There we go. Right, bale loaded. Could try and get all of these down here first. And then I will head up the hill, mainly because I'd like to unload the trailer onto the trailer and strap it down and do the full weight of it from the top of the field, which I don't normally do. Because it's, it's, it was a little bit more interesting moving the trailer load of bales when it's actually completely full. So if we do that, we'll sort of weave our way backwards and forwards and pick up all of these bales right the way up through so that we actually do our travelling from the top here. I think we're going to end up with more than a trailer load. We do normally, don't we? So I'll go... Yes, we've definitely got more than a trailer load up here. Let me go over this side and we'll get the ones from the very back up here first. Half past four now. If the number starts changing on that silage, it's going to start changing pretty quick. At the moment, it's not changing. And we've gone to half four. Okay, how many bales am I going to have left here? I got... Well, there's six. I'm going to have two bales left over. That's it. It's just two bales left over after this. There's that one. I got three bales right here. There's actually four. But yeah. Two bales left over. One there and one there. So let's stop you right there like that. And unload onto the trailer and then put the straps. Okay. It's the second time I've done that. And then we can start heading off down the hill. And probably I don't want to go too fast coming down the hill like this. But that's quite a cool picture right there. Okay. I've marked the cool picture in my video. I think we're going to be okay. Let's bring you on down. And I want to slow down slowly because I don't want the trailer tipping over as we go around the corner. But I do want to use the track because this is a very, very heavy trailer load. So I'd like to use the track as we come through here. I'm going to try, actually, and level the track as it goes through there. Because you look at it at the moment, that is not very level at all. Um, where it goes along the bottom of the other field, I'm not going to try and level it at the moment. Although, no, actually, I think I might. I think I might try and level that as well. It's certainly not going to be an easy thing to do to try and level out that track. But that way, it's not leaning to one side as we're doing our travelling. So I'm going to bring you over to here like this. Take those straps off, put that one on like that, and then unload. And then we've got to run back and we've got to get the last two bales. Then I want to get the fertilizer being spread on the field. I'm going to go and get these bales first. Then we'll get the fertilizer going because I'll put that into the doits. And we'll start with the grass field up there. Planting, I could have started planting already. Um, I Technically I could have, but I, I do think it would be better to wait until the morning before we actually start the planting. Um, purely because... I'd have had to leave. Uh, I'd have had to leave the time scale exactly, not, like not touch it at all, and that would have been like a little bit unrealistic, I suppose, because we would have been sort of moving away from um, how long it would actually take to get these bales all loaded up. So by doing it this way, I, I do think it's a little bit better. I'm gonna bring that one round. Uh, you know what? Let's let's not go rushing too fast. We will stop, we will unload, and we will put the straps on the load like that. Let's slow that down again. It's still not moved. How long is it going to take before that silage price starts to shift? I'd like to see it move. I'd like to see what the new silage price is going to be. But this along here, right? Now, it's, it is leaning over to one side here, but I don't think it's too bad... And I kind of, see, I kind of want to level it out a bit. 
But at the same time, I'm also aware that that could be quite a difficult and expensive thing to try and do to level that out along there. And I certainly do want to level it out going along here. Um, but again, it's, it's not going to be the cheapest thing to do. It's absolutely not going to be the cheapest thing to do. So we'll have to see how that works. I'm pretty confident that I can do it. But, yeah, I, I don't really want to interfere with it too much going back towards the other end. Because it, it's also going to interfere with the road out the other end as well. And I, I don't really want to get into that too much. Right, let's take the straps off there. And, you know what, I'm just going to leave that there. I don't actually need to do anything else to it. So I'm going to do that in a minute. I'll bring this one over. And I'm going to stop that one there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this one out. And we're going to get the fertilizer spinner onto this tractor straight away. So that it can get started with that job. So I'll put you back over to there. And we'll let the other tractor deal with that one. So that can be unhitched there. And then I can go and get the fertilizer spreader from in the shed. And start spreading fertilizer. We need to get fertilizer on both of the fields. Ideally, I'd like to get fertilizer on to the... Now, wait, wait a minute. Where's the spreader? I thought it was over here. Does anyone know where I left the spreader? Okay. Now I'm really confused because I had a fertilizer spinner. And I had it in that shed. Oh! Oh! It is in that shed. It's behind the sprayer. It is in there. Honestly, I didn't see it there. I, I thought for a one horrid moment that maybe I'd deleted the mod without realizing that I'd done it. But it does come up with a, you know, confirm that you've deleted this mod thing when you start up. Um, yeah, it's okay. It's right in here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to back this one back down here like this. So I'm going to put this one in front of the wrapper. So we'll still be able to use this one. Yeah, lower that one down there and put that in front of the wrapper. And I'll still be able to park the baler next to it. There'll be room for that as well. So that one will go in there. And then we'll back in here and we'll grab that little tiny spreader in the back there. And we'll go and do the grass field first. Get that one done. And then we can start working on the arable field. The arable field is not quite as important to get done immediately. We, it, obviously, it does need to be done, and we will be doing it. But it's not quite as important to get it done, like, right now. Whereas the grass field, I want to get that done sooner rather than later, just because of how long... Um, that it, the grass can grow fast without us sort of realising, and if I don't do it now, I could very well end up forgetting all to, completely forgetting altogether. I don't really want to do that. Right. 7.35. Silage price, no change. Sheep productivity. 76 sheep. I got another one in two hours' time. It's all looking good on the sheep. I still... The, the, no change on the silage price. Still. It's sort of... I don't know, see, it seems a little odd. It does seem like it's taking an unusually long time to come about with any change on that silage price and it, do, it does change we know it changed we've seen it changing before we've, we've definitely seen that happening so it's not like it's not going to do it it's just a question of when how long is it going to take before it actually finally kicks in and bring this one up through here i will do the work with the lane going all the way along there i'm going to do that first before i start doing um, fertilizer on that field and everything else because once we've done that there is going to be a little bit of plowing that we're going to need to do to sort of re-establish the edge of the field now technically we're also going to need to put a bit of lime along the edge of the field but I'm not going to worry about that we're not doing any yield comparisons or anything for it so it's, it's not like that's going to make a big difference um, and it's only going to be a small strip up one side which I don't think is going to make any real difference to the overall performance of the field. So we will leave it until we actually need to put lime across the whole field again. And this field up here, if I just do one coat along here, I don't think I actually need to do any more than this. I think that is all we need for this to actually work properly. So again, I'm quite happy for that. I don't need to um, nurse anything up here. Bring that back to there. 
And as soon as we've done one pass down this side, I will set the hired help going on this field, and we can just leave it to it. We don't need... It's nothing like with the, the grass and the mower, with that whole um, tip collision thing nonsense that we got going on here. Um, and I am going to have to have a look at that. I haven't done it yet. It's on my to-do list. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. I don't know if I've got the actual capability of doing that, but I will have a go. I'll see if it's possible for me to do it. I'll, I'll take a look. Um, if not, then I might beg and plead with someone else to <laughs> have a look at it for me instead, because uh, they, they, they'll probably be able to do a better job than what I can. So there's the edge of this one. I'll just do along the bottom as well, just to make sure that we've got all of it, and then I can run back up to the top end. Yeah, stop that one there. Bring you back up round a little bit, like that. And just finish that off. It's going to do this one pretty quickly. It'll run across this nice and fast, finish off this field, and then I've just got that one there. Like I said, I will do the lane and everything first. I'm wondering if I should start working on that now, actually. You know, it's something that we, it is something that we need to do. I do need to get that particular job done. It's one that I would like to get done. like to do that as soon as possible, really. Get that lane all the way along there, and... Also, I have it level as well. It's, it's, it's the, the level of the lane that I would really like to make sure is done properly. I think we're looking at about here. So if I go to that point right there, there it's possibly going to leave a little bit out that side. It's um, not going to be spread, but it's only the tiniest, tiniest little blip, so I don't really mind. You over here. Silage is no change. You over here, you can now go back round. I will give you a quick run over with the spanners just to tweak everything properly. And then we can put you away in the shed and we can await your next harvest, which is going to be beans. We're going to... It's soy, we're planting soybeans. We're going to be having a tofu workshop right here. That's, that's, that's what we're going to start doing. Tofu workshops right here. Prepare that one. Yes. You know, I've never tried tofu. I've seen I've seen it made, not not in person. I've, I've seen it made in video, um, but I've never actually tried it ever, not once. Now I, I've I've been told by a number of people and a number of sources that it's a fairly tasteless thing, but it does. The, the really good thing about it is that it does really really absorb well. The, I mean, it does have some flavour to it, but it really ab absorbs really well the flavours of whatever you cook with it. So that's like the, the really great thing about it is that you can really sort of choose what your tofu tastes like. Um, but I've, I've, I've never actually tried it at all and it, it's on my to-do list. I've, I've been looking at it a bit lately and I'm thinking, you know, I'd, I'd like to try this stuff because it's, it's not just trying the tofu, it's the, the whole process of making the tofu that seems quite interesting to me. I, I, I like the, the whole thing. It's, um, it's, it's quite an interesting process of actually how it's made. You, know, you have the soybeans and you, you grind them all up into a paste. And um, once they've all been ground up into a paste, uh, you, you put a load of water with... Well, you, you grind them up into a paste with water. So it's not paste as such, it's... Um, you, 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 you're basically just mashing them up and you're turning it all into milk. And then you take that milk and you heat it up and then you add in um, a coagulant, gypsum. It's it's actually like a really, really, really common thing is gypsum. Um, there's another coagulant that you can use. You can use lemon juice if you want to. If you've got um, a, a one that is got enough citric acid in it. So it's got to be quite a sour lemon juice. Um, or there's a, a, a extract from seawater that is a common... Um, tofu coagulant that is used in Japan. Gypsum is the most common one used in most places, but the Japanese one is this one that's derived from seawater. I don't know if that's anything to do with maybe they've got a um, less supply of gypsum available in Japan, and that's why they developed this one from seawater. I've no idea. I don't actually know the story behind that. Um, but you, you add this in, and then it separates out curds and whey exactly like cheese making. But instead of putting rennet in it, you're putting um, uh, gypsum in instead. And it's still a coagulant. That's what rennet is in cheese making. So you warm up the milk, you add the rennet, and then it separates out the curds and the whey. Uh, with cheese making, you take the, the whey goes off elsewhere. And there are things you can do with it, but a lot of the time it is just ditched. Um, and then you 
uh, you take the the curds and you, you squeeze them all together into a big block and um, uh, what yeah you, you do actually squeeze them you, you, you gather them all together all, all, all a lot you gather it together into a block and uh, it, it's all squished together and then that's it um, after a bit of time it's made into cheese tofu is made in pretty much an identical way except that you don't need to leave it to mature like you do with cheese Tofu is ready to eat the same day you eat it while it's still warm from the pot. Um, there are ways to preserve... Oops, okay, I didn't mean to smash my trailer there. There are ways to preserve tofu, um, but that's uh, different again, and there's different steps involved with that. Uh, cheese, you can also eat that on the day that you produce it. That's a, that's a type of... That's, a, that's more like cottage cheese. It's a softer cheese. And that's edible on the day that you make it as well. You, you, you can just use it on the day you make it in a, like a, a cottage cheese type approach. Um, so both cheese and tofu are made in exactly the same way, just slightly different ingredients. And I've always sort of found that quite a fascinating thing, so the, the striking similarities between the two. Because I eat a lot of cheese. I love cheese. I eat a huge amount of cheese. Um, but I've never ever had tofu, so uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's on my to-do list. Now, I've been told that supermarket stuff is bland, tasteless, and um, you, you really don't want to do that. If you're gonna try tofu for the first time ever, either go to China or Japan or some you know, so somewhere in Asia um, where they make a lot of tofu and try some of their tofu, or uh, make your own. And making your own is apparently not all that difficult. So. I don't know which option I'm going to go for. Probably I'm going to go for make my own, although I am seriously considering just trying a bit in the supermarket first and then I can run a comparison. Going to China is probably not going to happen in the near future, mainly because um, I don't currently have a valid passport and I can't afford it. So, um, yeah, that, that, that one's off the cards for the moment. Right. Still no change. Let's jump out and we will repair this one. Not you, not you, but you. Yes, you can have a quick repair job. And then I'm going to go through these. How are we doing? Right, you're doing that bit up there. And you're going to stop right there because driving forward three feet was just way too complicated for you. There's just too much for you to cope with. You can handle it. Pressure was too much. Um, that's all right. We we timed this beautifully, it must be said. We timed this absolutely beautifully. So I haven't got time in today's video to start messing around with doing that um, road. So we will do the road in our next video. We'll probably wait until morning, actually, and um, deal with it then. I, no, no, no. We're not going to deal with it as soon as morning comes. We need to get the sheep pen. That's got to be our next priority, so I don't want to be spending any money on the road just yet. I'm going to wait until we've got the sheep pen done. So that's going to be our first priority, is getting that sheep pen and making sure that we've got everything that we need for it. So even the fertilizer to go on the field here, we don't need to do that just yet. That can wait until after we bought the sheep pen, so that, that any little extra... Although, actually, we need the money for this, don't we? So... Um, I'll start around this side, but I've run out of time anyway. So that's my thoughts. That's what I've been thinking about uh, today. I'd like to have your opinions on the trailer. Do you think that we should only sell in blocks of 45,000 litres of product? It does mean that with things like beans and with canola, it's very likely that we won't be able to sell after a single harvest. We will have to wait until we've had two harvests before we're able to sell and... The reason that I like this is because it will add a little bit to the challenge. And perhaps for some of you who don't like the fact that I use autoloaders, um, it may make up for the fact that I'm using the autoloaders and just sort of add a little bit more of challenge back into the mix. I don't know. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Maybe um, most of you think it doesn't really matter, um, say, a minimum quantity of 45,000. Um, but then, if we do a minimum quantity of 45,000, it's still going to be the same with the beans and the canola in that we're, um, we're not going to get that in a single harvest. Not just off of this field. We're going to need a bigger field to be able to do that. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. 
This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.